Greetings, friends. Once again, Pastor Eddie Mariel here with guidance through midday prayers for Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Please join with me in our opening sentences. Our help is in the name of the Lord. You may respond, maker of heaven and earth. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Praise the Lord, and you may reply, and the Lord's name be praised. For our psalm reading today, we're going to read Psalm 143. Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O I am who I am. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O oh, I am who I am. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O oh, I am who I am, from my enemies. I have fled to your refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. For your name's sake, I am who I am. Preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries. For I am your servant. Let us pray. God of our hope, you bring the first light of dawn to those who live in the dark places of desolation and fear. Send your good spirit to lead us on firm and level ground, that we may put our trust in you and do what is pleasing in your sight through Jesus, who is the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And our Old Testament reading for this afternoon, for this midday, comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 32, verses 1 to 9, and then jumping to uh, verses 36 to 41, same chapter. Jeremiah, chapter 32, 1 to 9, and 36 to 41. As I read... Or as you read along, whatever jumps out to you, whatever the Holy Spirit speaks, hold on to that. Um, meditate upon it, think on it as I continue and finish the reading, and I'll leave space after the reading for your continued meditation. Friends, let us now listen for the word of the Lord. The word that came to Jeremiah from I am who I am in the 10th year of King Zedekiah of Judah which was the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah, where King Zedekiah of Judah had confirmed him, confined him, excuse me, had confined him. Zedekiah had said, Why do you prophesy and say, Thus says I am who I am? I am going to give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. King Zedekiah of Judah shall not escape out of the hands of the Chaldeans, 
but shall surely be given into the hands of the king of Babylon, and shall speak with him face to face, and see him eye to eye. And he shall take Zedekiah to Babylon, and there he shall remain until I attend to him, says I am who I am. Though you fight against the Chaldeans, you shall not succeed. Jeremiah said, well, the word of I am who I am came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalem, is going to come to you and say, buy my field that is at Anathoth, Anathoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanamel came to me in the court of the guard in accordance with the word of I am who I am and said to me, buy my field that is at Anathoth in the land of Benjamin for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of I am who I am. And I bought the field at Anathoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out the money to him, 17 shekels of silver. Now, therefore, thus says I am who I am, the God of Israel, concerning this city of which you say, it is being given into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. See, I am going to gather them from all the lands to which I drove them in my anger and my wrath and in great indignation. I will bring them back to this place, and I will settle them in safety. They shall be my people, and I will be their God. I will give them one heart and one way, that they may fear me for all time, for their own good and the good of their children after them. I will make an everlasting covenant with them, never to draw back from doing good to them. And I will put the fear of me in their hearts, so that they may not turn from me. I will rejoice in doing good to them, and I will plant them in this land in faithfulness with all my heart and all my soul. And our New Testament reading today comes from uh, Matthew's Gospel account, chapter 22, verses 23 to 33. Matthew 22, 23 to 33. As I read or as you read along, whatever leaps out, hold on to it, meditate upon it. The Holy Spirit is speaking, teaching us something new. Uh, so hold on to that, meditate on it throughout the reading and I'll leave space to continue your meditation afterwards. The same day some Sadducees came to him, saying, There is no resurrection. And they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies childless, his brother shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died childless, leaving the widow to his brother. The second did the same, so also the third down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman herself died. In the resurrection, then, whose wife of the seven will she be? For all of them had married her. Jesus answered them, You are wrong because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd heard it, they were astounded at his teaching.
Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the thing that jumped out to me today, I don't know what jumped out to you, but the thing that jumped out to me today was exactly this whole question of um, how might marriage and things like that work in the resurrection. And um, I need to do some continued reading on this particular passage, but my suspicion um, is that when the Sadducees brought the question before Jesus, they were, you know, because we can do that sometimes, uh, we have a hard time um, letting the scriptures speak to us and speak truth to us instead of bringing our assumptions or what we want to be true and trying to use the scriptures to support our own thoughts and our own points. Um, we're all susceptible of that, myself included, which is why I always caveat things to make sure that I'm not being uh, hypocritical or not being um, unorthodox or not being unbiblical. Um, so my, my like I said, so I have to go do, do some more reading on this, but my, my suspicion is that the Sadducees brought this question from a context in which across the world, not just the Jewish people, but across the world at this time, uh, women in, in, in given in marriage were treated as property. So it made sense to the Sadducees, logical sense to the Sadducees that will if women are treated as property now here on earth and we get resurrected, then obviously they'll still be treated as property in the resurrection. So we got to figure this thing out for this poor woman who has had seven theoretical uh, brothers die on her. Like, who, well, whose property is she? You know, when, 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 when the resurrection occurs. And I, again, I think that's a pretty good suspicion. <laughs> because of Jesus's response. He's like, you're wrong because you don't know the scriptures nor the power of God. Like the whole concept of marriage is not property. Um, even though we understand that that's what was going on at the time, still does occur in some cultures in the United, or in the world now. Um, um, you know, but marriage is this, 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 this covenant, right? It's, it's a, it's a mutually agreed upon entered into covenant that, is a that is a that is a partnership, but partnership, um, you know, certain roles are performed, but they're performed collaboratively, uh, and they're performed um, mutually, not exclusively. <laughs> you know, was uh, so, you know, um, if I, you know, in, for example, many of you know, in, in ours, right? So I do all the cooking, but I don't do it all, you know, on an occasion when I just can't, or I'm busy, or I'm running around doing what the various things I have to do. Sarah steps in and fills it. Sarah does a lot of cleaning, primarily. But when it's time for guests to come and it's a major clean, I'm in there and I'm scrubbing toilets and I'm washing floors and that's how it is. Um, so there's a, there's a, there's a, there, yes, there are like roles, quote unquote, there are things that we naturally do and take responsibility for, but they're responsibilities and they're mutual. And so we kind of dovetail those and they come together. Um, and I think that's exactly what Jesus is trying to communicate to the Sadducees, where it's like, um, I encourage you to reevaluate this uh, women as property uh, paradigm that is across the world to really reevaluate that um, because that has no place in the resurrection. So it kind of feels like it shouldn't really have a place here and now either. Um, so those are my two cents on that. Those are my thoughts. Like I said, I'll do some follow-up work to make sure that I'm not leading you astray, um, doing some crazy unorthodox thing, but that's how the Holy Spirit is speaking to me today. And I hope you find that encouraging. Let us close our time together in prayer. Eternal God, your hand shaped our lives by grace, and your hand rescued us from sin by love. May your hand guide us through this day, shielding us from all evil, strengthening us to do justice and love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, the God of peace be with us all. Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Have a great day.